Let's get his take on what he's expecting in the markets today. Alastair Schultz joins us now from ACY Securities in Sydney. Alastair, pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Um, I guess we do have this sort of risk on sentiment um, across equities at least because of earnings season in the United States and the tech space. Is this playing out though across all asset classes, this risk on? Uh, look, I, I don't think it is entirely. There are a number of factors that are sort of at play when it comes to whether the risk on asset is coming into place. But <clears throat> either way, we are looking at definitely the tech stocks rising up. And in some places, it's it's almost insane to sort of look at them and consider them to be, you know, seeing as having value right now. Uh, the other places that I do see that there are a number of, you know, sort of industry sectors that are sort of providing a little bit, at least here in Australia, is obviously the the commodity sort of based things such as BHP. I think we're seeing their quarter quarterly earnings overnight or early this morning. So there are other assets around that sort of side, especially on the iron ore, any companies that are sort of focusing on that commodity exporting. Uh, when it comes to the US stuff, I mean, overnight we've seen the NAS 100 fly up again. Obviously, we've also seen the um, the other S&P 500 going with it. And those FANG stocks really driving that a lot with each of them sort of contributing quite heavily towards the growth. But even then, to year to date, you're seeing sort of a 17% increase across everyone outside of the FANG on the S&P. So that's a interesting case to look at. It's got more of a tech computing feel about earnings season this week in the US. IBM obviously up about 6%, including after hours today. Which are the other names on your radar for what's coming up from earnings season this week? This week, I'm going to be looking at Microsoft, Unilever, UBS, uh, Coca-Cola, and I'm also going to have a quick look at Texas Instruments as well, uh, just purely because of all the sort of related inter interests that they have, obviously, as being tech firms themselves, but being sort of away from the standardized or, or the ones that are really going up in value. I think there's more value to be held in those or undervalued as they are now than what there is in perhaps stuff like Tesla and Amazon. If we, if we move over to Europe, sorry, Alice, there, um, we see now the yield difference between the German bunds and the Italian yields back to where it was in January, which is pretty staggering considering we still have the coronavirus to contend with globally. Do you expect this parity or this difference to hold at these levels or do you think it will start to stretch out again? Look, I do, I do think it's probably going to stretch out a little bit further than what it is now. Uh, well, when you look at the sort of stimulus side of things that we're seeing from the EU, uh, obviously these sort of southern states or the ones that have been impacted the most by coronavirus and of course have had a pretty catastrophic hit to their economies, they're the ones that we're seeing the bond markets really having a bit of a struggle with. So I am interested to see what happens with these new stimulus measures that are coming up that are up for debate now from obviously the ECB, but all the other rest of the EU states as well, uh, and keeping an eye on where they're going to put the funding towards and how they're going to go about it. I mean, at this stage, it's looking like they're going to be spending, you know, somewhere in that $700 billion mark. And it's really they're arguing over about $50 billion mm. and where that's going to end up. So that's really where the focal point is going to be when it comes to how the bond market's going to react to it. I do see it personally sort of stretching a little bit further before we do see something that's a little bit more concrete that says where it might head. Alistair, you know, in terms of what gives you conviction at the moment, is there anything that you'll, you'll, you're watching, like catalyst-wise, that might give you conviction in markets, whether it be earnings guidance in, in, in the earnings season, whether it be more stimulus, whether it be a vaccine? I mean, what are you watching to give you real conviction at the moment? At the moment, I mean, when it comes to the stimulus side of things, I don't think you can discredit it. Uh, it is certainly providing a lot of flow into the markets. It is providing a lot of sort of, not stability, I would say, but certainly at least some level of volatility that allows us to sort of have some good trading opportunities from it. The idea of where the stimulus goes, unfortunately, is what happens after this is where I'm looking. And my convictions really are that there are likely going to be problems when the stimulus does start to dry up. And even during that transitionary period between a stimulus point and obviously the fiscal side of things where they're going to have to move between having one side of the money to a different policy altogether and how they support it is going to be quite hard to sort of gauge but to me that's where i'm going to be looking the most because i think that's where we're going to start seeing companies really get their true value uh, at the moment it, it's very difficult to gauge on, on where prices are really going to have have to move to because of how much stimulus is really affecting what's happening plus we've got a lot of sentiment that suggests that the consumer side is down even though there are positive stuff on the retail sides each country has its own independent market and obviously has a very different set of data figures coming out if you look at sort of the chinese side of things you're seeing that their industry is really starting to boom but the sales and consumer spending is sort of falling here we've got a little bit better improved consumer spending and it keeps moving around depending on what 
market you're looking at and those stocks are sort of reflecting it. All right, Alistair, I really appreciate your time on the program. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.